So now I want to identify uh, one of our roots in terms of the Jewish people. I call it the Jewish underground. The Jewish underground consists of those millions and millions of Jews throughout Jewish history who felt the way I do, <laughs> but did, couldn't, do you understand, publicly protest because in those days you could get killed. Now you'd be executed, excommunicated. Do I, I mean, people didn't do that. So uh, they expressed their rebellion. All right, that's what, all right. Was it Jewish? Was the rebellion Jewish? Yes, it was conducted by Jews. Uh, and I call it the underground tradition, so let me try to ex explain the underground tradition. Um, the underground tradition uh, is, is expressed in what I call uh, certain philosophers. Um, way back some 2,000 years ago after Rome <coughs> defeated the Jews for a second time in a horrible war. Um, there was a, a rabbi, his name was Elisha ben Avuya, um, who was perhaps the greatest scholar of his time. He simply picked himself up. He didn't cease to be Jewish. He just gave up of, uh, the rabbinate, if you will, because he says, I don't understand this. Uh, all these good people have died in this war, do you understand? We were promised that indeed this war would lead to salvation do you want, and what? All we have is suffering and I want to know why. And telling me that we're sinners is no answer. So he left. Uh, and in fact, uh, there's a, a book on our, on our bookshelf here, it's called As a Driven Leaf uh, by Milton Steinberg, uh, which is the story of Elisha ben Avuya. So, but he, and then there's another one in the, in the 10th century AD, there was a Jewish philosopher in Persia whose name was Hiwi al-Balchi. Don't worry about pronouncing <laughs> it. Just say, it rhymes with Kiwi, and that makes it easy, right? All right, then you got it. Uh, Kiwi, Hiwi, all right, Hiwi al-Balchi, and he actually, he lived at the same time as Omar Khayyam. You may remember the poetry of Omar Khayyam, well, whatever it was. Uh, we got it in English literature in high school, but it's, uh, uh, he was a Persian poet who was a secular Muslim. And Hiwi al-Balki most likely knew uh, about uh, the, the ideas of Umar Khayyam, and he uh, wrote a whole book in which he questioned, again, on the same basis, the very existence of, of God. So, what I'm saying is throughout the ages there have been all these people, do you understand? They're the Jewish underground. Did they get published? Was the establishment, what? The establishment insisted on conformity. Ultimately the Jewish personality developed three characteristics which um, I consider to be underground. And in fact when I went to high school most of the Jews I knew, even if they belonged to traditional synagogues, had these characteristics. They come from having lived with absurdity. Most of the Jews I knew in high school were the ones who were skeptical. Oh, it, was, it was always so Jewish. Well, but when I went to synagogue, you always said, Jews are the people of the book, we believe, we believe, we believe. That wasn't, that wasn't the Jews I, know, I knew. The reason why there's Jewish skepticism is after you've been hit over the head 200,000 times it finally registers that, might be, that maybe the management isn't so good. <laughs> Do you understand? And since you can't express it freely, you express it, that's what happens. Jews develop the skepticism because that's what they, they live with. They live with all this disappointment. The second characteristic is called ambition. Jews became overwhelmingly ambitious. Now in the, in the Talmud it says that every Jew should accept his portion, his chalik, happily. Whatever God gives to you, you say what? Thank you. You made me a garbage collector, thank you, thank you, thank you. You made me a slave, thank you, thank you, thank you. you whatever you made me, I say what? Denks, thank you. 
when I first read that, I remember, I said, that doesn't sound Jewish. Jewish ambition is a function of the fact that, having said thank you, thank you, thank you, all they kept getting was what? Garbage. Yes, garbage collection, that's right. So uh, in, in the end, the only way, and, and this is a humanistic thing, the only way that they could succeed was that they had to take their own lives in their own hands, what? Planet. I mean, ambition is part of taking your life in your own hands. Damn it, I don't care what, what they're saying over there. I'm not, I'm not going to die. So Jewish skepticism, Jewish ambition, and, you know, the most important one is Jewish humor. Jewish humor comes from a, a very deep skepticism, you know, it's... My, one of my favorites is, you all know Fiddler on the Roof, which is based on a, a Sholem Aleichem story about Te Tevye, the milkman. And you know, Tevye has this conversation always with God, and my favorite one is when he says to God, he says, look, I, I'm so glad to be one of the chosen people, but would you mind choosing somebody else? <laughs> now, that's a Jewish joke. Do you, do you understand? That's a Jewish joke. It's if, you, if you understand that attitude, do you understand the underground? The underground is like a resistance movement that's been around for ages. And finally, in the 19th century, it exploded because there was the freedom to say what you wanted to say. So we have very deep roots. I always say we have roots in what I call the underground tradition of the Jewish people. And that underground tradition is of equal importance to what the, uh, what the establishment uh, itself organized. All right. Well, um, 